When most people hear the word gratin, they think of a rich casserole of potatoes and cream. But today, I'm going to take a different take on gratin, and I'm going to use all hearty greens. So we're going to first start with our topping, and that topping starts with a couple cloves of garlic. I'm just going to put this in our food processor and buzz it for five to seven pulses until it's coarsely chopped. Perfect. Now for the bread. We want to have a nice texture to our topping, so we're going to use a rustic bread. So I have three cups of bread cut into three quarter inch cubes. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil, three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I'm just going to pulse that down until the largest piece is about a quarter of an inch. Okay, that looks good. Now a couple more additions. I have one cup of grated Parmesan cheese. I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of table salt and a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. I'm just going to pulse that down. Okay, topping is done. Now we can move on to the greens. When it came to choosing the greens for our gratin, we actually chose two greens. The first one was Swiss chard. We really liked the flavor of Swiss chard, but when it cooked down, it collapsed too much and made for a dense gratin. So we cut it with a little bit of curly kale. The curly kale doesn't cook down quite as much, so it gave the gratin a little bit more volume and a little bit more body. So let's start with prepping our kale. So it's pretty easy with kale. I just hold the stem in one hand and pull down on the leaves with another one like that. And it should just pull the leaves right off. I'm going to take the stems off of all the kale and then go back and cut the leaves. Okay, now that I have the stems out, I'm going to cut these into about a one inch ribbon. You don't have to be too precise here. So that's our kale. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to wash it later. Okay, now for our Swiss chard. We actually want to save the stems here. The stems have a lot of flavor and they're going to form the aromatic base for our filling. So for Swiss chard, I like to lay the leaf on the cutting board and then cut down either side of the stem and then remove the stem, put the leaves aside. I'm going to continue to do this two pounds and I've already washed this Swiss chard. Okay, so I have these all separated. Now I'm going to work with the stems first. I'm going to cut these into two inch lengths. I'm going to put them in our food processor. Now that we have our stems in the food processor, I can focus on this mountain of leaves that I have here. Now like the kale, I'm going to cut this into one inch ribbons. Our greens are prepped and ready to go. Now we can focus on the aromatics for the filling. So I have my Swiss chard stems in the food processor. Now I'm just going to add one onion to this. So we want to coarsely chop this. We'll process it further in the food processor, but we want to get these down into rough, coarsely chopped pieces like so. Okay, I'll just transfer the onion over to the food processor. So I have my onions in here. I'm just going to process for 20 to 30 seconds until those Swiss chard stem and onions are broken down, finely chopped, and I'll scrape it every once in a while as needed. Let's check this. That looks great. Nice and finely chopped. Now I can go wash my kale and then after that we can start cooking. Now it's time to cook our greens. We have a large volume of greens, so blanching and sauteing were out. They would have taken too many batches to cook all those greens. So we're actually going to steam our greens. I have a Dutch oven here with about two cups of water. It's about a half an inch of water in there, and that's going to create a lot of steam. It's going to cook down all those greens very efficiently in one pot. I'm going to add our wash kale first. I'm going to cover it. I'm going to turn the heat down to medium high and let that steam for about five minutes, stirring once. Okay, I think it's time to check our kale. Oh yeah, you can see that that has wilted down really nicely. It's time to add our Swiss chard. Okay, so I'm adding all of our Swiss chard leaves. We're going to cook our Swiss chard stems, which we processed later on. I'm going to cover this. This is going to go for four minutes. Same thing. The Swiss chard needs to wilt down and we're going to stir it halfway through to make sure it's cooking evenly. Okay, it's been about four minutes and we're going to check our greens. So oh, these look great. You can see that they've wilted down nicely. So we're going to take these to the sink, drain them, and I'm going to let them sit for 10 minutes. 
After 10 minutes, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna press them down with a rubber spatula to get rid of all the liquid in there. Our greens are cooked and now it's time to turn our attention to the aromatics. Now I have the same pot that I cooked the greens in and I'm gonna add the onion and the Swiss chard stems that we processed earlier. I'm also gonna add two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, one and a half teaspoons of chopped thyme, a half teaspoon of table salt, and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I'm gonna turn this on medium high. We're gonna let this cook down for about eight to 10 minutes. And what we're looking for is for all that liquid to evaporate and for the onions and Swiss chard stems to start to brown. Okay, so we'll stir this together and we're gonna let this cook down for about eight to 10 minutes. It's been about eight minutes, all the moisture is gone and I can start to see the vegetables browning around the edges. So I'm gonna add our greens back to the pot. Now to this, I'm gonna add one cup of heavy cream, just a scant little bit of cream. That's gonna enrich it, but it's not gonna overpower the vegetables flavor. And one last addition, just a little freshly ground nutmeg, about an eighth of a teaspoon. Okay, that's off the heat. Now it's time to assemble our gratin. I'm gonna put our greens into this 13 by nine baking dish. And now we can add our breadcrumbs. So now that our breadcrumbs are on there, I'm gonna transfer this to a 375 degree oven on the upper middle rack. We're gonna let this bake for 20 to 25 minutes. And what we're looking for are those breadcrumbs to get nice and golden brown and it will start to bubble around the edges. Okay, it's been 25 minutes. This looks fantastic and it smells even better. You can smell all that cheese and those earthy greens. So I can't wait to eat this, but we're gonna have to wait for 10 minutes. It's a little bit too hot right now. So we'll be right back. It's been 10 minutes and now it's time to eat. The texture is great. The greens are tender and soft, but that rustic breadcrumb topping adds a ton of crispness to it. And the flavor is great too. The earthy greens really, really come through. You have a hint of garlic, the Parmesan and the crust really is nice and it complements the earthy greens. And it's not very heavy. There's enough cream to give it some body give it some richness, but it doesn't overpower anything. So it's quite amazing to think that greens can make such a hearty and excellent gratin. So if you wanna make this at home, remember these keys. Use a rustic bread for the topping to give it a nice crisp texture. Use a lot of greens, both a combination of kale and Swiss chard, for the best flavor, and just a small amount of cream, one cup for a velvety texture. So from America's Test Kitchen at home, a surprising recipe for Swiss chard and kale gratin. Thanks for watching. You can get all the recipes and product reviews from this season and more on our website. That's americastestkitchen.com slash TV. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later. <laughs>